Hey everybody, Jim Edwards here along with Stu Smith. Welcome everybody to the Sales Copyright and Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. Today is episode 149, Feeling Fine at 149. And today we're talking about a very important topic. And as an expert in podcasting, Stu, what is our topic for the podcast today? Well, good segue, Jim. Um, we are talking about how to become an expert in your field. Time to level up or just show people that you're the export. How do you show people that you're the expert? You don't have to change anything that you're doing because you are already the expert. They just don't know it yet. Right. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, you know, I think what would be kind of fun, Stu, we'll use the timer. No, we're not going to use the timer. Um, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so let's talk for a minute about what is an expert. I would be very curious, especially with our live studio audience. What do you all think an expert is? Who is an expert? What is an expert? Stu, give me your kind of your definition or thoughts on what is an expert? I uh, kind of like your go-to person for answers. Okay, I like it. Um, I like that actually a lot. Uh, huh. All right. That was good. Thank you. I don't know if I can add anything to that. I when well, I think of an expert, I think of somebody who has wisdom, which is basically experience. Um plus knowledge applied. That's when I think of an expert. Hey, very good, because that's what Google says. A person who has a comprehensive and authoritative knowledge of a skill in a particular area. Okay. So All right. very close. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> Robbie said he's a chapter ahead of his clients. Frederick says, someone who has a superior knowledge of a practice or procedure. Carlin says, someone who's been paid for a skill. Jorge says, extensive deep knowledge, expertise, and experience. Vicky says, a person with authority and experience in a specific area. I think the, the experience thing is, is, a, is key. Is key. Um, and so maybe to go with Stu's thing, go-to person for answers gained from experience. There you go. Because it's one thing to learn about it. You know how we, we all have that one friend that knows everything but has never done much of anything and is always quick to tell you what should be done but has never actually done it. Like people who can tell you all the stuff to do to get ready for a marathon but has never actually run one or done one or everybody who knows all the everything about. So I'm gonna digress for a minute. So I'm in a, <laughs> I'm in, I'm in a gym on the, on a boat. It wasn't a gym boat, but it was a cruise with a bunch of people. And I had my little Stu Smith workout in my little, in my, in my three ring binder. And I'm, you know, I'm doing my drill like I've done for years. All right, sometimes up, sometimes down. But, but always just doing my little drill. And, and so guy comes in, I don't really, I know of him, but I don't really know him. And he comes in and I've got a couple guys around with me and they're trying to do the workout with me and stuff, but they're really not doing all that great and are looking to go do something else because it's hard, even though they're all half my age. So guy comes in and starts talking about pancakes and I'm like, what? in the hell are you talking about pancakes for? Well, you know, I know that if I do this certain amount of this and that and that and this, that, you know, I can have this many pancakes. I said, are you, you're, you're serious, right? He said, oh yeah, yeah, that's how I figure everything out. I said, okay, well, tell me about your workout. And he's like, starts telling me and I said, okay, that's kind of cool. He said, but you know, if you want, I'll work out with you. I was like, okay, we're warming up with 50 pull-ups. <laughs> and, yeah. and he tried to be cool, and he's like, 
I said, we can do them as, a, I usually do them as a pyramid. It turns out to like 55 and we throw in some other stuff just to warm up. He said, well, that sounds like the workout. I said, no, that's the warm up. We're going to do a one to 10 pull push pyramid and we're going to do it in about eight or nine minutes and we're just going to get it done. How many pan? And I, that was such a mean thing to say. I said, how many pancakes is that going to get you? <laughs> That was so mean, but Jim bully. My point is this. If you're going to hold yourself out as the expert, you better know what you're doing and you better be able to back it up. And the problem is, is that nobody is the definitive expert. Nobody is. Nobody knows it all. And so I prefer to think about, you know, do you want to be the expert? I prefer to think about it like this, okay? There's three hats that we are constantly going back and forth between, all right? The first hat is, <laughs> that's, really goofy, that's like my goofy SpongeBob face. Um, the first hat is the student. What does a student do? A student learns stuff, sees stuff, tries stuff, figures stuff out, okay? Does stuff, but not with the expectation of, hey, I'm still learning how to do this. So that's the first hat that you can wear. The second hat you can wear, I actually wore for, for 10 years, literally. And it's called the reporter hat. This is where you observe see what's going on, talk to people, figure out, and then you report on it. The last hat that you can wear is, that's like the worst graduation hat ever, is the expert hat, okay? This is the person who knows. The reality of the situation is that if you are truly an expert, you are constantly shifting back and forth between all of these hats. Anybody who is like the expert and is never learning and never observing and never reporting and never seeing what's going on and saying, wow, my reporter hat says there's some cool stuff going on out here. My student hat says I need to learn how to do this. And then I'm going to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Then I'm going to tell people what I did. And at that point, I have reached some level of expertise. And then I have to start the process all over again. <clears throat> if you find somebody who's holding themselves out as the expert, who you don't constantly see doing things that they haven't done before, or they don't know what's going on in the market, who's doing what, what's going on, that kind of stuff, they ain't a real expert. Because, like I said, the real expert is doing all of these things at the same time. That's a true expert. In fact, that is what we would even call a master. So, there is no such thing as being an expert. There's someone who is a master in a certain area, but... This isn't a destination either. This is completely a journey. It's a mastery is a journey. It's a never ending journey. So in the Jim and Stu show, I said to you, you know, we were talking about sandbox and, and other stuff like that. And you described, you know, doing really, somebody could do ornate 3D things and other things like that. There is coming in the world of the metaverse okay mm -hmm. the ability to be able to plan stuff and mind map and and do things in true three dimension there's some stuff that's already out there that's kind of clunky but once they kind of get the interface and everything done it's it's going to be amazing that literally just like you talked about being able to plan one you know dirt dive one of your seal team missions 
where people even had like docks and boats and three dimensional things and, and other stuff like that. Imagine being able to step into the metaverse and visualize a journey along creating a, a product or on marketing your business or developing an idea <clears throat> and being able to see it in three dimensions, like even just your content marketing, being able to see, and I, I know a company that's doing this right now, that being able to visualize your content for the next six months and how it's relating to your various avatars and, and being able to spot where you have your top heavy or you're, you know, you're just right or you don't have enough to be able to literally see what's coming to visualize it. It's, it's amazing. It's hard. You can't even describe it. But once you were in it and saw it, you'd be like, oh, my God, that's amazing. But. If, if you're stuck in 2007 thinking that you got this whole ebook thing or this whole internet thing or this whole video thing knocked, you're done. Yeah. And, and you're done so fast. Plus, you were done by 2009. Yeah. <laughs> but you think about the pressure, too. It's like, oh, I'm the expert. I'm the expert. I'm the expert. No, 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 no. I am constantly trying to to be at the level of mastery, which means I often, more often than not, have to humble myself to become the student and to say, I don't know. Somebody needs to explain this to me. Can you explain this to me? I don't know about this. This sounds cool. And then where the expert comes in and the experience and the applied knowledge is to be able to take what you learn as the student, what you learn as the reporter, as the, and this is another way of saying the observer. And to take what you learn and plug it in with what you do know. And then you're like Stu driving down the mental road going, okay, <clears throat> what does this mean? What, how can I use this? How can I integrate this with what I already know? And every once in a while, dude, one of those dominoes just, it's like, one hits and then it's like chink, 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 chink. Holy crap. And then it's like, boom. And you have this quantum thing. Like what happened with you with your um with, with your ebook business when I talked to you about um about yeah, getting covers covers, made covers and for, stuff. Covers made from fiber. Right. Just just that one thing, that one where if, if you're the expert. Nah, none of that stuff. No, nah, not, nah, not, nah, not nah, that. I no, nope, I, nah, I don't even know about that stuff. But if you can humble yourself and be the student, be the reporter, observer, and it's like, holy crap, that's some cool stuff. And this is the thing we've been missing. And if we do this, all of a sudden it's like, pew, it's going to take off like crazy. And there's a lot of stuff like that happening in our business right now. Oh, and yeah. the, and the cool thing is that it's like it 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 doesn't. <laughs> It's like it happens really, really slow, and then it'll it'll just bust loose, and you have just this intense period of innovation and adoption and figuring stuff out, and then you spend a while kind of getting back control of the dragon or the unicorn that you're riding on the back of that, that decide to take off across the field with your hair flowing behind you, you know, mm. just saying. Okay. Anyway, that Pretty was – picture. That's kind of – you no, that's great. Think about my hair flowing. I wish I had some hair to flow. Um, but a true expert is not. Anyway, the, the true expert is the person who's capable of of doing all of this, and and th that's the process. Whew, that hey, was a I, lot. Sorry, man. Jim, I took a few notes. Okay. While you were speaking, because you you you, you struck a nerve, um, a good nerve. Um, mm -hmm. So the expert does not necessarily mean that person is a good teacher, coach, or mentor. No, that's a learned skill. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? To, yes, the, like Tom Brady, we will always say that is the best quarterback I've ever seen, mm -hmm. but he may not be a great quarterback coach. Right. Right. I don't know. Maybe that's what he's going to do next. I, I'm not sure. But, <clears throat> um, you know, just the expert does not mean you're a good teacher. So you have to, if you are 
trying to do a business being the expert, you also have to focus on your ability to teach. Um, yeah. The ex another note before you wrote your student thing is uh, expert is still a student. Yeah. Um, and the expert has failed more times than the student has ever tried. <laughs> yeah. Great quote. <laughs> that, did you, did, is that your quote? No, 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 no. That's like ancient Chinese secret quote. Yeah. Okay. Ancient yeah. Chinese secret. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. Great observations. Um, Let's look at some comments in the from from the the peanut gallery. Uh, <laughs> I think he said you should have known it. Pancakes. He's a pancake expert. Um, AI is moving at, at lightning speed. Uh, Master knows when to return to the fundamentals and re-explore them. Yes, absolutely. That's a great thought, Carlin, because that's something I'm constantly relearning the stuff that I knew. But I, when I relearn it, I learn it with a whole new perspective and I'm able to, to take it to the next level. Yeah, you're um, able to apply new technology and new methods to old experience. Right. And make it a whole new experience for people. Easy. You know, you know what they call that whole process, Stu? Staying relevant. Synthesis. <laughs> yes. It's being able to synthesize all that stuff together. Uh, Frederick says, I describe myself as a lifelong learner, but I enjoy learning new tech. Carlin says, you just spoke to me. That's awesome. Somebody whose name I have no clue how to say says hi from Russia. Jorge, this is a good observation. Jorge says it takes a lot of effort to stay an expert by continuous watching, experimenting, and learning. You're absolutely right. And Vicky says, I'm feeling more like an expert now. And that's, I think, when you know you found your passion, too, because, Stu, you... You are only about a year, less than a year younger than me, but you still do things that like 18 year olds can't do as far as physically, mentally tough as nails, good dad, you know, great dad, great husband, great family man, all that cool stuff. Lots of work for the community and your country still, I think, and, and you're still sharp and looking to do a lot of stuff and, and learn and do and like your podcasts and, you know, your coaching. Oh, yeah. And do you think it's because, you know, it's because also part of being in that process is, is being in the area that you're supposed to be in. Like, like you're doing what you were called to do. Yeah. I also enjoy it, you know, so it doesn't even feel like work. Um, the, uh... You know, and, and I write about coaching and training. So if I'm going to be coaching, if I'm going to write about coaching and training, I need to be coaching and training. So even though I am the coach out there training students, I'm also the student learning new applications for individual problems at the same time. So you can definitely wear a couple of hats for sure. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. So. I think you, you just said something that, that is key to the whole thing. You got to, you got to enjoy this. You got to enjoy whatever it is that you're doing. Cause I was damn good at mortgages and I was damn good at real estate. But after, and after I got, past the feeling good of making a lot of money, the money wasn't worth it. And it became a giant ball of stress that made me want to go step in front of a beer truck going 60 miles an hour down the highway. I mean, I was miserable. So all the stuff that I thought I was going to get that would make me happy Sports car, house, expensive suits, fat salary, you know, that, that whole thing. I was miserable. And so you got to find the thing you enjoy. That's not to say you follow your passion because there are a lot of yoga teachers out there that are on food stamps. So 
yeah. part of it is finding the thing that you're really good at and figuring out how to enjoy, do it in an enjoyable way that helps you to, to do your thing. So that's, that's, you know, it's because you say this all the time. You said this in the, uh, when we had the DIY Media Marketing Academy. Um, the problem is, is if you turn your hobby into your business, you lose your hobby. And the thing that gave you joy becomes a source of stress. Yeah. So you, you got to be- There's a fine line for sure. Yeah. So it, it's a combination of what you're good at, how you can help people, and you got to enjoy it. But sometimes the stuff that you're really, really good at, you learn to enjoy and become engaged in. And I, it's interesting. I'm not sure where the switch flips because anyway, maybe that's, maybe that's for a different podcast some, some, sometime, but uh, figuring out where you're supposed to be. It's a, it's a combination of experience, knowledge in the market uh, is, is where that is. But th this is key. I, I can't, I mean, this is one of those things just, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to put in the work that's necessary to reach the level of mastery that's going to get you to, to people to look at you like as, a, as an expert. It's yeah. just not, not going to happen. You're not going to see yourself as an expert. You're going to have imposter syndrome. You're going to have all those things that plague people that put themselves, unless you have no self-awareness and you're a total sociopath, um, you're, you're going to have that, which means... The only way around that is to put in the work to reach the mastery, and you can't do that unless you're enjoying it. That is true. Hey, uh, by the way, four years of Russian at the Naval Academy has helped me to decipher what uh, High from Russia says, and that is marketing ENG. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Did that, you copy that, and paste into Google? I did not. That is actually just the – english word spelled out in russian letters okay it's not actual i mean it could be a marsh a, a russian word as well but it is actually pronounced marketing excuse me as it is spelled yeah did you did you ever you probably can't tell us this but did when you got out of uh the naval academy did they ever stick you on a radio and a listening post somewhere listening to uh, Rus Russian chatter during the Cold War? Well, it was different. Yeah, I graduated in 91, so it was over, right? My, well, my political true. science background and Russian language quickly became a history degree in the late in, in the early <laughs> 90s. <Yeah. laughs> That's a funny um that's funny now this okay here i want to talk about this and we'll wrap this up frederick says people say to be successful and happy to find what you enjoy doing and do it and your audience will uh, find you unfortunately my focus is always i need to make money so here's the thing the bottom line is that money comes as a result of an exchange of value and uh what you need to do is create a value proposition for people, an offer, something that they go, holy crap, that's going to help me to avoid pain. You know, it's page 16 of my book, make money, save money, save time, avoid effort, escape pain, either mental or physical, be more popular, feel more love, be more clean, what have you. So what you got to do is figure out where all that stuff intersects. Again, it's your knowledge your experience and the market. What does the market want that you can satisfy? So, and typically we create our best offers, either doing something that is reaching back in time to help our previous self, or we're in the present time helping someone that we love and are close to who has a problem or an issue. That's typically where the most successful things happen not saying, hey, I heard you can make money with dog training videos and I hate dogs and I, I don't even like cats. <laughs> so, and I, by the way, I love dogs. I have four. Okay. <laughs> so that's the, that's the key. And it's hard to figure out and it takes a while. 
And it's not about following your passion because your passion, I, I've never really seen anybody that their passion, like I have a passion for guns. I, I'm not going to go become a gun dealer or a, a weapons instructor or any of that stuff. All right. I, I have a real passion for it, but I'm not, I'm not going to make money from it. You know, I never thought I'd become a teacher, but we're all in the end, we all turn into teachers in some way or another. So focus on, focus on the market, focus on where your knowledge and experience and the market all intersect. That's where you got to get. Um, okay. And no, we're going to, we're going to coach Frederick today. <laughs> I'm also an ordained minister, and my passion is to help people, but I found that in ministry, there is not a lot of money. That's right. So what you got to do is take the things you have learned in the ministry and find a market that you can help. Look at John Maxwell. He is a great example of someone who was in the ministry, who actually did really well in the ministry, but he took the leadership lessons that he learned from the ministry and brought them into the secular world. Again, knowledge, mm -hmm. experience, market. Who, you know, what payoff, what big benefit, what big payoff can you get for somebody? What problems can you solve for somebody? And that's, you know, again. Yeah, and, and people think of him as like the ethical leadership instructor. Oh yeah, you, you you know I mean that's how he is viewed. He's the number one the leadership expert, coach in the world. As the expert of that, and he pulled that from, you know, his ministry experience. Yeah. So leading there his, you go. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean so, to interrupt you. No, but. no, no, no. That's it's the Jim and Stu show. It's like sometimes <laughs> it's the Jim runs his mouth, but then Stu knows how to wind Jim up and let him go. So it's it's planned. Gotcha. Um. But I, I think, you know, again, this is this this is more than just for uh, um, this is this is this is more than just the topic of a podcast. Oh, I mean, sure. So this, this is this is this is a weekend. This is a this is six months. This is, again, wherever you are. But again, no matter where you are, the next step is where you need to go. Um even if the next step is figuring out what the next step is. I, I, I'm not trying to be all Yogi Berra-ish. Sometimes the next step is figuring out what the next step is. And if you never quit and you always have your eye firmly fixed on where you want to end up, you're going to get there someday. Yeah, I remember in 1996, I told my wife, well, it was 19, it was actually 1990. Yeah, it was 1996. I told my wife, I said, look, I don't know how we're going to do it, but if we're ever going to get rich, it's going to be because of this internet thing. And we were driving down Richmond Road in Williamsburg and her little green geo tracker, man, we were living in a trailer. I mean, no, if anybody didn't have a right to 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 want to get rich, it was me because I had made every mistake I could. I'd had it. I, you know, I had been poor. I'd made a lot of money. I was poor again. Couldn't seem to make good business decisions, all that stuff. But I remember saying, if I'm ever going to get rich, it's going to be because of this internet thing. Now, I had no idea how, but I knew that that I was at least going to, you know, sneak my ass into the stadium. It's like my buddy Dexter said, you know, all we got to do is get into heaven. He said, we'll be butt naked in streets of gold, but we'll be there. <laughs> and that's the thing. You got to get in the stadium. So figure out the area you're supposed to play and then start figuring it out. Yeah, I remember. Hey, what did your wife say when you uh, said that? My wife <clears throat> is the most supportive person I have ever met in my life. She has always supported me in everything, even when we had no money. And I said, honey, I, I want to go take basically all the money we have in the bank and buy an, a super VHS machine, a mixer, a microphone, and a scan converter. And I'm going to sit on the floor in our trailer and make a VHS tape that I'm going to sell to real estate agents by speaking in front of a room. And nice. she said, she said, she said, okay, let's do it. 
And and that's why she has jewelry that she wears that costs more than where we used to live. Because my wife has been there for me every step of the way. And when I needed a kick in the ass, when I would say things like, you know, I'm doing the best my best I can, she would look at me and say, no, you're not. You are not doing the best you can. You can do better than this. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember when I came upstairs, when I had my idea, is, you know, during that week between Christmas and New Year, right? And I had, I had published a book, did okay. You know, it's not doing too bad. But I was like, I'm going to make ebooks. I have this whole database of workouts. I'm going to make ebooks for everything with a fitness test. And she goes, okay, dear. And, uh, you know, just kind of got out of my way and just just said, go for it. And yeah. uh, I'm, then like two weeks later, I'm like, I sold my first ebook overnight, made money in my sleep. You know, that, that was a that was a big moment. Yeah, a big moment. And it was like my aha moment of like, OK. Th Absolutely. Let's go down this road. And yeah. and you got to the, the thing is, like, you got to have a team and my core team for the last 20 years has been um, has been Terry and Susan and Susan has worked full time with me longer than Terry has by like four years, two years, two or four longer than Terry. Susan's been working with me since 2003. It's 19 years. OK, we're in the 20th year now. Damn. And so you got it. But you you got to have team members. You got to have people that will support you, but also kick you in the ass. Because if everybody's always telling you, hey, it's cool, you're smart, oh, well, you know, then that's that's when you run into a problem. And people will look at you, will literally stand their ground and say, you know, that's a really stupid idea. I, I really think that's dumb. And then you get over being butthurt about it. And then you, you know, you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess you're right. <laughs> um, that happens about once a week. Or so, you prove them wrong and you say, aha, can go either way. It, it, no it, way. Yes. Yes. So anyway, I think we've I think we've done this. So yes. there's there's a lot getting to be uh, an expert in your field. Yep. And that's that where true. the knowledge and experience and the gray hairs and the wisdom come from. So and being humble. OK, cool. So thanks, everybody, for joining us for the Sales Copywriting and Content Marketing Hacks podcast. If you want to learn more about how to create amazing sales copy, head on over to CopywritingSecrets.com. Grab a free copy of my book with over 83,000 copies sold. It's been called a modern day classic. Head on over to CopywritingSecrets.com. Get a free copy. Just pay small shipping and handling. Stu, if people want to get in shape, where can they go? They can go to Stu Smith Fitness and see the man who wrote the book on tactical fitness. All right. And I can you tell go. you that, that Stu Smith helped me to go from fat and 40 to 50 and fabulous. So there you go. All right, everybody. Have a great day. and We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.